What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Yes, it is another episode of the Pack a Day podcast, but it is not just any episode of the Pack a Day podcast. It is officially time to kick off draft profiles. As much as I love the Green Bay Packers, as much as I love the NFL, Matt, I absolutely love the NFL draft. It is so fun doing these. My One of my biggest issues is that I wish I could go into insane deep dives on all 400 players in the NFL draft, and I want to watch tape on all of them. And unfortunately, because I cover the Packers 365, that's just really tough to do. But I do get to do, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks of these, probably a little bit more uh, of like deep dives into profiles, and I can't wait to share them with you. And we're going to kick things off today with the one and only Jackson Smith and Jigba. Let's speak it into existence. Pick 15 in the NFL draft. Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Green Bay Packers from the University of Ohio State. This is a very, very fun player. And I'm just going to get into sort of the basics first, kind of go over, you know, some of the athletic things and, you know, um, just his profile. And then we'll get into the full breakdown, the positives, the negatives, what he could bring to Green Bay, etc. We'll follow a very similar formula and format as to what I did last year with the prospect breakdowns. If you're not familiar, you'll get to see it today. And then we'll continue as we move forward with some other prospects as well. But let's kick things off with Jackson Smith and Jigba, junior out of the Ohio State. State University, 6'1", 196 pound wide receiver. And one of the big things is he just turned 21 years old in February. So we know that Green Bay loves younger players so that they can develop them, so that they can potentially get them through that, not only that first contract, but their second contract, and they are still under the age of 30. So that is a huge advantage. If you're hoping Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to end up with the Green Bay Packers, the fact that he just turned 21 is a very good sign. Another very good sign is that he had a 8.30 RAS or relative athletic score. I'll mention this in our first episode. I'm not going to mention this every episode. Green Bay doesn't care about relative athletic score. They don't know what RAS is or RAS is. They have their own athletic thresholds. But if you've been paying attention, if you look at the RAS scores every year, Green Bay is consistently in the highest RAS scores every single year. And it basically what RAS score is, it is a relative athletic profile in comparison to other players at the same position throughout the entirety of the NFL combine and NFL draft, all the numbers that are available to Kent Lee Platty. He puts in one huge database and he ranks the players in comparison to all the other players at the same position. So what this ultimately means is that if you look at all the draft data of different wide receivers over the history of the NFL draft and the NFL combine, Jackson Smith and Jigba is in the 83rd percentile of all wide receivers, and Green Bay loves their high-end athletes. Now, to drill that down and to get a bit more specific, he had a 35-inch vertical, which was in the 61st percentile of vertical jumps. He had an 84th percentile long jump, was 69th percentile in the 40-yard dash with a 4.5240, had a 3.93 short shuttle. 3.93 3.93 seconds is insane. 99.2 percentile for the short shuttle. Absolutely freak show number. 6.57 in the three cone, a 99th percentile three cone. And what does that mean? All right, I know a lot of times we get these three cone numbers, the short shuttle numbers. Those are the agility numbers. So if you're looking for wide receivers to be able to get in and out of their breaks, cut on a dime, change direction, those are the drills that you are looking at. And when it comes to short shuttle and three cone, you are talking about an absolute freak show athletically. Just insane numbers, again, over and above the 99th percentile in short shuttle and three cone. And as he went through these drills, there was one specific quote, I believe it was from Fran Duffy, where he said, this was one of the best wide receiver position workouts that I can remember. And he was far from the only, you know, from the only person at the combine that had that sentiment towards Jackson Smith and Jigba. He tore up the wide receiver drills and made everything look as smooth and clean and as natural as you could possibly do it. And we are going to talk about that more in just a moment. Now you might be thinking, all right, high-end athlete, right? 83rd percentile athlete overall, but a 4.52 40-yard dash. Like that doesn't seem very great. You know, usually we're talking about 4440s, even maybe some 4340s. Well, 
if you look at some players, and we'll talk about Jackson Smith and Jigba being a slot receiver primarily in just a moment, but if you look at some of those primary slot receivers, let's look at an Amon Ra St. Brown, let's look at a Cooper Cup. Amon Ra was a 4.6140. Cooper Cup was a 4.6240. I'm not saying they're apples to apples comparisons as players, but if you want to be able to win in the slot, a 4.340 isn't necessarily the be all end all. You're looking for those agility scores. And that is where Smith and Jigba, just like I said, absolutely rocketed up every single draft board. And it was what was somewhat expected that he was going to test very well in the agility scores, but Again, it's very rare that you test with a 3.93 short shuttle and a 6.573 cone, which shows off insane, insane, insane agility. And that's what you're getting in Jackson Smith and Jigba. And maybe the most important thing here, if again, if you're hoping that he's going to be a Green Bay Packer, the Green Bay Packers have pretty strict athletic thresholds. We don't know exactly what those cutoffs are. And Green Bay has shown the propensity and ability to go outside of those thresholds if they want to for the right player, but they love their high-end athletes. They have specific thresholds. And by all means, Jackson Smith and Jigba hits those thresholds. The height, the weight, the speed is good enough. The agility is through the roof. Like everything is exactly what Green Bay generally looks for at the wide receiver position. So he is a fit athletically as well. Now, from a statistical standpoint, in 2020, Smith and Jigba had only 10 catches for 49 yards in a touchdown. Then in 2021, his huge breakout had 95 catches 1,606 yards and a 16.9 yard per catch average with nine touchdowns. An amazing season. One more time, 95 catches, 1,606 yards, 16.9 yard average, and nine touchdowns. Then to follow it up in 2022, he had five catches for 43 yards in large part due to a hamstring injury that cost him the majority of the season, hampered him a little bit when he was on the field. He just never really looked like himself. And like I said, the hamstring injury was a huge reason why. So if you look at that all together, he played a total only of 529 snaps in college with almost all of that coming in 2021. If you want to look at Pro Football Focus and their grades on him, in 2020, he only played 162 snaps. He had a 72.3 grade. Then in 2021, a 91.7 grade on 645 snaps. And that's overall snaps, more than just a moment. And then in 2022, he had a 55.1 grade on just 60 snaps. So he had 529 receiving snaps is how I should have, I guess, said it earlier. So only 529 receiving snaps, only a bit over 800-ish total snaps in his career at Ohio State. Of those 529 receiving snaps or snaps that he was out on a route, 439 of those he lined up in the slot per pro football focus. So 529 receiving snaps, 439 were in the slot. The rest were on the outside. So he has been a predominant and primary slot receiver in his career at Ohio State. So those are the general basics. Again, the, his overall profile, how he's you know graded out per PFF, his statistics, his athletic uh, testing, etc. Here is his actual scouting report, my notes on Smith and Jigba, his positives, his negatives, how he fits, etc. Let's start with the positives. And I want to go over number one very clearly, very distinctly. We're going to, in a minute, get into the weeds a little bit, and we're going to go and break down every single detail of the things he does well, of the things he doesn't do well, and we're going to nitpick everything. And that's what we do, right? We watch these players and we nitpick a little bit of everything. Here's the thing with Jackson Smith and Jigba. You can throw out almost everything that you want, because if you want to know the one thing that he does well, stop overcomplicating it, simplify it, and just say what he's great at, because what he is great at is getting open. He is fantastic at getting open. And we'll talk about in a little bit more in just a moment how he does that. And we talked a little bit about his ridiculous agility. That's part of it right there. But what he does well, he gets open and he consistently gets open. And that's partly due to route running, agility, athleticism, etc. But we don't have to always overcomplicate things. He's just really good at finding open space, 
creating open space, separating from defenders, and being open for his quarterback. And you know what? If you have a first-time starting quarterback like you will be in Jordan Love, you know what's great to have? A wide receiver that consistently gets open. Like I said, sometimes in the draft, we can get so far into the weeds and we can break down every little thing of how they get to from point A to point B and what miles per hour they were running and all of this stuff. It At the end of the day, what do they do really well? Tell me what they can do. He can get open and we don't have to make it much more complicated than that. And that's a good thing to have as your superpower as a wide receiver is the ability to get open. That is Jackson Smith and Jigba's superpower and he does it at a very high level. Another positive, as we mentioned earlier, is his age. Just turned 21 years old, which means his best years are still ahead of him. He has a long way to go from a developmental standpoint. It's not like you're drafting a 24-year-old wide receiver who has had three more years to develop all this stuff. He is going to get into an NFL program, put on functional strength, continue to improve as a route runner, continue to hone his craft, and at the end of the day, he still has a lot of development still ahead of him, even from just a pure physical standpoint and what he's going to be able to do in an NFL weight room and all of it. So the fact he's only 21 years old is a huge advantage for Smith and Jigba. And then we talked about already too, another huge advantage is just his overall athleticism. So he's an 83rd percentile athlete, but that three cone and that short shuttle is extremely, extremely high-end stuff. And if you want to know a lot of times what separates not only the best of the best, but like where players break out, it's because they have something special. And we talked about it's his ability to separate, but if you want to talk about an athletic trait that sets him apart, those agility scores are incredible. And we talk about him being a slot receiver. Well, there is no better skill that you can have, no better superpower that you can have in the slot than that agility and that ability to separate, that ability to cut on a dime, change direction. Because when you're in the slot, corners have to be aware that you can go. If you're on the right side against the sideline, you're going straight or left, right? If you're on the left side, you're going, you're going straight or right more often than not, right? You can always cut right and cut back left and, so, and those sort of things. But there's only so many things that you can do. But when you are a slot wide receiver, the world is your oyster. The field is completely open to you. A lot of times you have two-way goes. You can go in so many different directions. And that agility and that ability to change directions, cut on a dime, is the most important trait. So the fact that Smith and Jigba has that at a supercharged rate, that he has that change of direction, that he can get from point A to point B and back to point A. And in such a quick period of time, that is going to separate him in the slot and allow him to gain that incredible separation at the NFL level. Now let's talk a little bit more about his positives from a production standpoint. We went over his stats, right? But one of my favorite things about Smith and Jigba and what tells me that he can play at an incredibly high level is his 2021 stats. And yes, the stats were really good, right? 95 catches, 1,606 yards, and nine touchdowns. That is really, really good. Doesn't matter who you are, what team you're on, who's throwing you the ball, you put up those sort of numbers and you've had an incredibly good season. That's all great. That's fine. That's that's all good and well. But this was not just any you know, wide receiver with any wide receiver core on any team. This was a wide receiver core that included Jackson Smith and Jigba, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Marvin Harrison Jr. Garrett Wilson, top 15 pick. Chris Olave, top 15 pick. Marvin Harrison Jr. next year, in all likelihood, top 15 pick. And you know who had, and you could even go further and say Jeremy Ruckert, who was a third round pick last year as a tight end. Let's just say CJ Stroud had some options with that wide receiver group. But do you know who CJ Stroud threw the ball to the most? out of a wide receiver group with Marvin Harrison Jr., Chris Olave, and Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith and Jigba. 95, 1606, and nine touchdowns. For comparison, Garrett Wilson had 70 catches for 1,058 yards. Chris Olave had 65 catches for 936 yards. Marvin Harrison, clearly the younger of the four at that point, still developing a little bit more, developing a little bit more. 11 catches, 139 yards, and three touchdowns. The three of them combined, Harrison, Olave, and Wilson, were what, right around a little over 2,000, 2,100 yards? The three of them combined? Smith and Jigba had 1,606 on his own. 
So like 500 less yards than Harrison Alave and Wilson had together. And all three of them are going to probably be end up being top 15 picks with two of them already being top 15 picks. Yet, when given the choice, when given the option, Jackson Smith and Jigba was the player that CJ Stroud looked to more often than not, who, who he targeted the most, who in my opinion was open the most. And Garrett Wilson already phenomenal, phenomenal wide receiver. Chris Olave was fantastic a season ago. He's going to continue to get better. And of the two or of the that of that group, Jackson Smith and Jigbo was the one that Stroud threw to the most. And it wasn't just Stroud. Defensive coordinators were and opposing coaches were interviewed about Jackson Smith and Jigba and said that he was the one in that season that they would work to take away. Not Garrett Wilson, not Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jigba. He was viewed as the threat. He was the one that was keeping defensive coordinators up late at night. Now the whole group would be. There's no doubt about that. Imagine having to, like, if any defense this coming season had to go against Harrison, Alave, Wilson, and Smith and Jigba in the NFL, they would be losing sleep over it. No questions asked. That That is a dynamic NFL receiving core, much less in college football. So all of it's problematic. And yes, having Garrett Wilson and Chris Alave makes it so that you can't single up on any one of those wide receivers because if you, you know, like, or you can't, I should say, you can't single out and double cover anyone. You, you've almost got to be cognizant of all of them. So it does open up things a little bit more, but still it is telling that he was the primary target for CJ Stroud and that Ohio State offense. The next is that he lives in the middle of the field. And while he didn't have a ton of opportunity at contested catches when he has, specifically in 2021, I think he had 10 contested catches or 10 contested catch opportunities with nine catches per PFF. He showed that he can make the most of those situations. He has good body control. He will go up and get a ball. He will catch it at its high point. He will wait till the last moment, flashlight hands if he needs to, and he finds a way to come down with contested catches. And a lot of times for slot receivers, that's not always the case. A lot of times those slot receivers, especially because agility is so important, they're a little bit maybe more undersized or can't hang through the physicality. That's not Smith and Jigba. He will hang through that contact. He will find a way to come up with the catch. And he's just a natural hands catcher that has a determination to get the ball. And more often than not, he goes and just gets it. And that is an important, incredible trait to have for a slot receiver who has those ridiculous athleticism scores or agility scores that we talked about earlier. Next is his ability to track the ball downfield. And these, I want you to start gaining a appreciation for the well-rounded wide receiver that he is because a lot of, again, if even if you want to consider him a primary slot receiver, a lot of primary slot receivers don't have all of these traits. It's very rare. Amon Ross St. Brown has displayed it so far in the NFL to be able to do almost all this stuff. Justin Jefferson, clearly another one, but it's pretty rare. And you want to talk about downfield tracking. Think of your your Edelmans and your Welkers, right? Who just live on these option routes and get in and out and kind of break out. Not always, especially Welker, Edelman did a little bit better, but not always the biggest deep threats in the world. And a lot of times it's because they don't have the size, they don't have the separation speed, or they don't have the ability to track the ball and really sometimes high point the ball or whatever it is that they need to do to come down with that pass. Smith and Jigba has that. He has the downfield tracking. He tracks the ball really well, plays the position so naturally, and finds a way to not only locate, but get to you know the, the spot that he needs to, and just simply come down with the catch. And that might seem like a ba- very basic and obvious trait to have for wide receivers. It's not, and it's not specifically for slot receivers. So really good that he has that as well, that downfield tracking ability. Next, I will say everything with him is smooth and everything looks easy. You want to go back to his pro day workout where people were saying it was one of the best wide receiver workouts they've ever seen. Sorry, at the uh, combine workout, not the pro day, but his combine workout was one of the best combine workouts they've ever seen at the receiver position. It's just because he's natural. He's fluid. He's smooth. He's fluid in and out of his routes. Everything that he does just looks natural. I talk about all the time at wide receiver and corner. One of the things that I look for at those two positions is just do they have a natural gift, a natural knack of playing the position, just an instinctual feel? I do feel like wide receiver is a artistry position and the best wide receivers in football have a ability to 
I, this is ridiculous, but like, I'm not serious, but almost like manipulate space and time and just be so beautiful. Like Devonte Adams is the best op, or like example of this, where like he was just at a different beat and a different timing and a different, like everything was so slow to him. Every, all the chaos that's going on, people running around everywhere, 21 other players on the field at the same time. And it's like, if you've seen uh, like the newer X-Men movies where Quicksilver is like every, he's just able to go through slow for everything. And like he's going fast and everything else is just in slow motion and he can do anything he wants. That's what Devontae Adams looks like on the field. It's just, he's at a different speed. It's, it's Matrix-esque. And I see that a little bit with Smith and Jigba, where everything else is just slowing down around him and every everyone else is chaotic and he is just smooth and fluid in everything that he does. And that makes it so fun to watch. And I am a huge believer that, like I said, this is an artistry position and you have to have some of that craft to what you do. You have to have that natural, just instinctual feel for the position. Smith and Jigba has that and it's a beautiful thing to watch. He has great hands, only six drops in his career. Now, as mentioned, it's not like he has a ton of wider you know, snaps in college to his name, but still only six drops in his career. All of those took place in 2021. That number again per pro football focus. He is an absolute weapon on third down, tight spaces, red zone, and he is going to be a young quarterback's best friend. I've talked about this already in previous episodes, but he is a walking first down waiting to happen. You've got a third and eight, Jackson Smith and Jigba. You've got a third and 13, Jackson Smith and Jigba. You've got a third and two, Jackson Smith and Jigba. You've got a tight red zone situation, Jackson Smith and Jigba. He is going to be your go-to receiver in those situations. And when you've got, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but he is a going to be a young quarterback's best friend. And if you've got Jordan Love making his first career season as a starter, having that sort of middle of the field safety valve that you know is going to get open, gain acres of space, separate, and just have the ability to convert those really tough third downs into first downs, that's going to make your job description a little bit easier as a first-time starter. He breaks off routes beautifully. That goes right back to his three-cone agility scores, etc. He's okay slash solid as a blocker. I think the big thing here is he gives effort. We know how important blocking is to Matt LaFleur and this offense on the outside. Smith and Jigbo will check enough boxes there where at least he's an effort blocker and he cares about it. It's not like he is an impact blocker, but he's going to be good enough to get by. And with Christian Watson being a great blocker on the outside and Dobbs being pretty, like Dobbs kind of in a similar situation where he gives good effort at it, not great at it, but I think that's enough for Green Bay, especially as more of a slot wide receiver. He's got great body control. I love, again, the way that he's able to contort his body to come down with contested catches when he needs to. He knows how to attack coverage and he knows how to attack corners. He will attack outside shoulders. If you start turning around, he's going to turn the other way. He attacks space. He's going to make you feel uncomfortable as a corner. And just when you feel like you have a beat on him where you're like, all right, I know he's going left. I know he's going left. I know he's going left. Oh, he's going right. Oh, and then he cut back left. I knew he was going left, but he's like, there's just enough nuance to everything that he does to make you so frustrated as a corner. He's going to mess with your mind. He's going to use his eyes. He's going to use his head. He's a really good route runner. He still has opportunity to improve there as every college wide receiver does, but he he just knows how to attack those corners and that coverage. And if they're, if they're in zone, he will find the space. He will find a way to make you give him that space. And like I said, he's just a master at finding you know, open space in, in zones and just separating and finding ways to get open. Doesn't matter what coverage you're playing. Doesn't matter what type of corner is going against him. He continues to work to get open, so it's not over when the initial play is done. He will work his way open and continue to work his way open. So on those scramble drill plays, he is a go-to in those situations. He does a really nice job of getting upfield after the catch. There's not a lot of dancing. It's just get the ball and get upfield, get the vertical almost immediately. As I mentioned, he is a very natural wide receiver, and he utilizes his eyes and head fakes to manipulate defensive backs as well. So those are all of the positives. The negatives... There's not a ton, but there is some certain, certainly concerning things that are worth going over here. The first is that he only had one year of production. The first year, 2020, didn't get a lot of opportunity on the field. Huge breakout in 2021, injured almost all of 2022. And that, you, you always want to see layers of production. You want to see that production get better. And had he come out in 2022 and play at you know, the same level he had in 2021. It's not like he even needed to get better, but had he had an amazing season again, this is a no-brainer, might even be a top 10 pick. 
The fact he only has that one year of production will give some teams cause for concern. Had the hamstring injuries, which is going to give some teams cause for concern. I don't think it's anything that's going to linger or be a long-term issue. And then I think this is a little bit disingenuous because I think sometimes we just move past the fact that the like he was an absolute stud wide receiver in high school as well. So yes, one year of college production, but you can just see the naturalness that he plays at the position. And that's something that's been evident since his time, even in high school. Next question is, is he a slot only wide receiver? And I think this is one of those situations similar to Justin Jefferson, where just because he only played slot for the most part, doesn't mean that that's all he can do. I do think he can have some success on the outside. I think to begin with, you really want to put him in the slot because that's what he's really, really good at. But I do think he can evolve into a multi-position wide receiver, meaning he can play left side, right side, outside, inside, and it's not going to matter. But I do think slot is probably going to be his primary position through the majority of his career. Next up is, can he be a consistent big play threat? We know he can get open. We know he can separate. We know he can make some contested catches. We know he tracks the ball well, but he's not a burner and he is going to have to work to get some of that separation further down the field. And that is one of those things where it's not like he's an incredibly dynamic Tyree kill after the catch or like somebody where you get the ball in their hands and they're just gone. It's not like he's able to race past defenders and get those big explosive plays down the field. So if you're talking about a game that is going more and more towards these game-breaking players who are going to get you know, your 40, 50, 60-yard plays, I'm not sure that that's ultimately what Smith and Jigba is going to be the best at. I think he's going to be really living in that you know, 25 and under you know, playmaking zone, but the red zone is going to be his, his gig because he can get open in those tight spaces. Third down conversions are going to be huge. And I do think he has enough playmaking ability where he can get some of those 30, 40, maybe even 50 yard gains. Again, it's not going to be like your, you know, four, two, 40 guys where he's just gone in a blink of an eye, but he's going to make enough plays that's going to make it worth it. But a lot of times if you're drafting in the top 15, you want that high end playmaker at wide receiver. It just depends on what you consider playmaking. If you need 60 yard touchdowns, he might not be your guy. If you want a ton of speed on the outside, he's not going to be your guy. But if you want touchdowns, first downs, you know, maybe some big plays mixed in, he's going to bring a lot of value to your team. Next is his route running and releases. They're really good, really smooth, natural at the position. But of course, as mentioned, every college wide receiver can continue to get better at it. And in some way, that's almost a scary aspect of his game is that he's going to continue to improve as a as a route runner. And with his releases at the line of scrimmage, that is a scary thought for defenses moving forward. Next is, can he improve his play strength? He's 190 pounds, so he's not tiny, small, frail. But I think if he can put on a little bit more strength, hopefully that will lead to more broken tackles, something that he's not entirely, you know, adept at, at this moment. Uh, how is he going to play against press coverage? I think that's going to be a big one. He obviously had a lot of free releases coming out of the slot. All of that said, teams are going to be able to use him in a lot of the same ways Ohio State did. But if you do want to get him playing outside a little bit more, it is going to be a question mark as to how he can play against more physical corners on the outside. And then that top end speed, that explosiveness, he ran a four, five, two. You know what? You know another player who was right at that mark? Jordy Nelson. And Jordy Nelson had enough nuance to his game, was a good enough route runner, knew how to stack corners. And how many big plays did we see out of Jordy Nelson on verticals and on that double move down the field? I see some of that similar type of play where you're so worried about some of the intermediate stuff and what he's going to do to you with his route running that before you know it, he's passed you, he's stacked you, and he's making a play down the field. So there are negatives here. There are things that you're going to have to answer and you're not 100% sure of as he makes his way to the NFL. The one year of production makes it a little bit tough, but the one year of production gives me less cause for concern when, again, two of the best wide receivers that we've seen come out of college the last couple of seasons and Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, this guy was the better of the of those two when they were together in 2021. As far as scheme fit, I think he fits absolutely perfect in Matt LaFleur's scheme and he fits perfectly with Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. Both of them can play on the outside. You can play Smith and Jigba in the slot. I do think you can rotate those guys around. And I think Watson's going to be your playmaker. Dobbs is going to give you a little bit of everything. And now you've got your slot guy over the middle that can work the middle of the field, find open space, convert those big third downs, and just be a different type of weapon than what you have right now in Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. So love the fit there. 
Special teams fit, not much. He's returned 11 punts for 71 yards. Probably not going to be a primary punt returner or kick returner and isn't going to give you much on anything on coverage units or anything like that. So very limited. If any special teams value, maybe could be a punt returner every now and again, but probably is not going to be your primary guy. As far as ceiling goes, I think he's probably a B plus slash A minus Justin Jefferson. It's really tough to get to Justin Jefferson's level, but I don't know that he's going to be that far off if he hits his ceiling. His floor, I think his floor is like a Juju Smith-Schuster, where you're a good player, but maybe have some level of limitation, but is still going to help the team. That, that's a floor, and that is a very high floor, but I think that's probably somewhere where his his floor is, is just his overall receiving skill is going to make him that he's going to be able to help teams at the NFL level. The comp, I've seen some Amon Ross St. Brown, some Juju Smith-Schuster, some Robert Woods. Uh, probably some mixture of all of that. Like I said, I, I actually think he probably comes close to like an A minus slash B plus Justin Jefferson. I, I think he can become that. Now, maybe not as good on the outside. And like I said, nobody is or it's very rare that anyone is quite as good as Justin Jefferson. But I think if you take that sort of a step back, I think Jackson Smith and Jigba can really play at a very high level and be a dynamic wide receiver in this league. What he brings to the team he brings exactly what Green Bay needs. The ability to get open, the ability to separate, and the ability to be a big time target over the middle and really just about everywhere for Jordan Love. Again, a perfect compliment to Watson and Dobbs who are already on the team. I love that trio. They're all young. They're all incredibly talented. And you're building them up as Jordan Love is learning to play in this offense. And then last but not least, is there value at pick 15 for Smith and Jigba? Absolutely. It could be gone could last a little bit longer, but if Green Bay decided that they wanted to pick him at pick 15, I think it is totally within their, not their, like they're obviously their right to do so, but I don't think anyone's going to be like, man, they really reached for Smith and Jigba at 15. I think it would be a fantastic pick. And one that I think is real, you know, realistically in play for Green Bay at that position, should they stick at pick 15. That is going to do it for my full breakdown of Jackson Smith and Jigba. Love the player. I think he's going to be a very real, like just He's going to be a fantastic wide receiver in the NFL would be my evaluation of him. You never know. Prospects are always iffy. He has had one year of production, has had some injury issues, but if he gets anywhere near close to what he showed in 2021, Green Bay would end up with a fantastic wide receiver if they would ultimately select him at pick 15. That is going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you right back here tomorrow, but until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.